Yeah, what a weird day. This game starts up in Denver. Justin Herbert comes out and is throwing a ball all over the field. They obviously, in their game plan on scout report, thought there wouldn't be much of a pass rush and they could complete passes, and they did. And they went up and down the field, and Justin Herbert had a good game. But in the first quarter, Jim Harbaugh left the field. He was escorted by trainers to the locker room. He said, what's this about? And I thought, maybe he's got the flu. And in my back of my mind, I said, maybe he doesn't feel well because maybe he's got heart irregularities. And we found out that was the story. Heart arrhythmia. He had a heart arrhythmia situation during the walkthrough on Saturday, did nothing about it, didn't tell anybody. And on Sunday before the game in the locker room, he felt weird again irregular heartbeat. So they took him back in. They did some type of electrocardiogram test and they were able to stabilize the heartbeat, came out uh, at the end of the first quarter and then did the game. And then he revealed in the post-game press conference, he's had three arrhythmia situations while being a coach. And he's had two oblations, which is the electronic stimulation to knock the heartbeat back into routine. Mm. And he might have that again. So that was kind of a weird story. The other aspect of the Chargers, they had they had offensive linemen. They had guys going down. Guys were getting dinged. They were at one point. Slater came out. Alt came out, uh, and and Pippins came out. Never ever came back in. So they had three offensive linemen. They got nicked. Slater and Alt eventually did come back into the game. Um, they beat up a bad Denver Broncos team, and on, they had a twenty three nothing lead. And they kind of took their foot off the pedal. Bo Nix came back, and he was throwing the ball all over the place, running for his life. Uh, he's gifted. He's really good. Hope they don't get him killed. They don't quite have enough players yet, but you could see based on he completed 15 passes in the fourth quarter. He threw for like 180 yards in the fourth quarter. And if there'd been one more possession, hell, he might even tied the game in the fourth quarter. But so the Chargers win. So everybody's happy. Well, let's be realistic here. Please, <laughs> please time out. They're three and three. Who have they beaten? The Panthers. Carolina. <laughs> Denver in the midst of a major rebuild and the dysfunctional Raiders. <laughs> Those are the three wins. So please excuse me while I reserve judgment that John don't order any damn playoff tickets yet. <laughs> so anyhow, that's, that's the charger game plan. Raiders situation. I swear to you, they set football back a thousand years yesterday in, in Las Vegas. The Steelers beat the Raiders has to be an all time ugly game. Steelers can't move the football. Najee Harris had just a shade over 100 yards, had one big run. Raiders keep turning the thing over. No Devontae Adams. Their defense is chewed up with injuries. Raiders are a minus 10 in turnover ratio, and we're just six weeks into the season. Hmm. And if Antonio Pierce is not in trouble yet as head coach, Antonio Pierce should be in trouble as head coach. So Pittsburgh – wound up beating the Raiders, and the Raiders have yet to solve the whole Devontae Adams hole. Just everything going on with the silver and black spins you back to what I call them, the silver and bleak. Just, it's absolutely ugly. Baltimore, Washington. Big test for the kid. I thought Jaden Daniels played really, really well. Didn't turn it over, but Baltimore, way too much firepower. 484 yards in total offense. Lamar Jackson and Derek Henry, what a combo. And as long as they keep those guys healthy, I mean, this is such a physical, brute force football team that the Ravens had. So Baltimore pounds Washington, but Jaden Daniels continued to play well. Happy birthday, Jerry Jones, Dallas Cowboy owner. How bad was that? Final score, Detroit 47, Dallas 9. Ha. They benched Dak Prescott. There's so many things wrong with Cowboy football right now. And it's not on Dak Prescott. And it might not even be on C.D. Lamb, although he ought to take the wallet out of his pocket because all the money he's carrying is slowing him down. He's not making a big difference. They can't stop anybody. And they have so many injuries on defense. And they have zero run game. I don't understand. They signed Dalvin Cook, former 1,000-yard rusher Minnesota, and he's not active. And you got Ezekiel Elliott has eight carries for 15 yards. What are the Cowboys doing? Now, this morning, day after a bad birthday, Jerry Jones, vote of confidence, Mike McCarthy, he is not in trouble. This is an organizational situation. But, boy, they're not good. What is good is Baker Mayfield in Tampa. What he put on a show yesterday, outgunned New Orleans, killed New Orleans. 
Mayfield, 325 yards passing, four more touchdowns. They're just chucking it all over the field. And they got this young running back who came out of Arizona State. He was only a part-time player because of injuries, Rashad White. And he's just pounding it, and he's got an extra gear running the football. And obviously, they got Mike Evans. Chris Godwin's had back-to-back double-digit games. I think he had 11 catches yesterday. The week prior, he had 12. Tampa is really rolling. Houston nails New England. Knew that was going to happen. C.J. Stroud and that cadre of wide receivers and Joe Mixon, the ex-Bengal, another 100-yard game. The interesting thing was New England force-fed Drake May. Now, he threw three interceptions, but he threw four touchdown passes too. Hmm. I mean, he was spraying the ball. He was standing in the pocket with a lot of heat around him, and he got the ball out and got the ball down yardage. Cleveland, this gets worse, and yet – They can't bench him. I'm talking about Deshaun Watson. I'm talking about the Browns. Here's a stat that is staggering to the mind. They have a stretch in Cleveland on third downs with Deshaun Watson at quarterback in the recent weeks, including yesterday. They had one first down in 27 third down opportunities. What? One for 27 with your quarterback. And he's taken, took five more sacks yesterday. He's got I think he's got 31 sacks now in six games. And he he doesn't look like he can play the game anymore. And here, by the way, he's worth 230 million guaranteed. Do you think he even cares? I don't know. He sure does. he's not playing with any fire in his gut because you have a good team around him. Uh just a disaster. And they got they got pasted yesterday by the Philadelphia Eagles. By the way, speaking of the Eagles. You know, we got one coach that's been fired. We got rumors out there there could be a couple more, maybe Jacksonville. A lot of people upset at McCarthy and Dallas. Nick Sirianni, why would you do this? Towards the end of the game, and they're winning against Cleveland, he turns around, walks behind the bench, and he's barking at Eagle fans who are barking at him. Really? I saw the video. I said, Nick, what are you doing? Why are you picking a fight with your own fans? Exactly. Because they've been hostile. They've been all over it. Philadelphia case. fans hostile? Yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> so that that was one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. They're winning the game. Now, granted, it, it's been kind of a substandard start to the season, coupled with last year's one and six finish. Sirianni is not being held in high regard. Chicago took out Jacksonville. Caleb has arrived. Caleb Williams. Is that back to back 300 games? Yesterday, he threw for four touchdowns. He looks so different. And they're running the football with DeAndre Swift. Keenan Allen finally healthy on the field. He caught two touchdown passes. And in Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence, they just don't have enough people around him right now. That, you know, they're sitting there at one and five. Now, the ownership, Shad Khan says, I'm backing Doug Peterson. Well, I don't know how much longer that's going to go, but the Jaguars' playoff hopes, for the most part, have been extinguished, not by the hurricane in Florida, but. Obviously, about what's happening on NFL Sundays. So those are some of the big storylines from games in week six. John, the floor is yours. Tell me what you think. Isn't it funny how a vote of confidence for a head coach is usually the kiss of death? You know, you know, usually a few weeks or months later, they're gone. Um, a couple of comments here. The main thing is I love seeing these young kids have success. Mm-hmm. You know, Caleb Williams, Drake May had his moments. Bo Nix had his moments. I think this is great for the game, and I just love, you know, seeing the young guys do well while we see some veterans like Deshaun Watson just look atrocious. So it's all part of, you know, do they have that magic touch, that secret sauce that can differentiate, you know, a Peyton Manning from a Ryan Leaf, you know, and it and it's almost hard to describe it, but it's like it's like porn. You you know it when you see it, you know, and those guys are good, and so I'm really happy for them. The Chargers, you know, they won in Denver. That's fine. I, I'm I'm less emotional about the Chargers. You know, I'm kind of getting over that as well. But we can add that to the list of the San Diego sports curse. And Raider Nation, do you have an, do you have something like to say to people wearing silver and bleak? It's than what you can say. I mean, it's just a just a freaking disaster. I mean, Pittsburgh fans showed up in Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, this, the, the Raiders are just a mess, but you, you got to solve the quarterback problem before you do anything. Okay. All things NFL. You got an opinion. Fans form chat box will be open. Want you to jump in, jump on board. 